Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And yes, Jesus loves you. You not only know that, you sang it loud, and did you hear these kindergartners, kindergarten graduates singing that so loud and proud? It was wonderful. If you didn't hear it, listen for it on the video recording you can watch on YouTube later. And as we're gathered as God's people, again, we're blessed that you are here today, guests and members alike, to celebrate Jesus, the risen one, and also to celebrate our graduates of eighth grade and kindergarten today. And yes, you have to go back to school tomorrow. <laughs> Aww. And we all have to go back into life this afternoon, right? Absolutely. And Jesus is with us. But attendance pads are in the pews. We would ask that you would fill them out and pass them on down to one another. Record your attendance in God's house this day. And then look at the names right alongside it, if, uh, even if you do know one another that you're next to in the pew. Just look at those as a fellow child of God, baptized by Christ. And if there's anyone who would desire a, a visit from myself or would like information on the congregation, would be interested in joining, please note that on the fellowship pad as well as you pass that on down from one another. Uh, we had Bible study this morning at 9.15, and next Sunday will be the same time. would invite you to join us. And also, uh, there was a survey that was distributed last week. You may have received it on the way in this morning. Um, if you didn't, you can ask for a copy from uh, Larry or the elders at the end of the service, and then if you can, turn around and fill it out quickly for the voters meeting that will be following this service downstairs, but as this, as this service ends, there will be a reception to honor our graduates in the fellowship hall downstairs with coffee and cake, and so after the service, you can go down there, and then after a little bit, the voters meeting will get started after we get pictures taken. And so uh, as we prepare for all of that this morning, it's a day of celebration. Celebration because not only does Jesus live, but his people are alive and active. And not only do we learn more of Jesus every day, but we go out and share Jesus every day. So with all of that having been said, let's stand and greet one another with the peace of Jesus Christ, and then let us join in prayer and worship. Join in prayer. Dear gracious God and Father, as we greet one another, now we also greet you. Good morning, Lord. We are grateful that we are here as your children to sit at your feet, to hear your word, and then go out into this world as your children who know you, who love you, and want others to know you and love you as well, not only here on earth, but also forever in heaven. So as we're gathered this day, put on our ears to hear with our hearts, our lives, so that others know that we've been hanging around with you, Jesus, as we invite them to do so also. In your name, Jesus, we pray this. Amen. And so we begin as we are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the sacrifice of your Son on our behalf, you made us worthy to approach you in confident faith. Help us, Lord, Holy Spirit, to give you all the praise each day, and what we can say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 9. But Saul, still bringing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, 
so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And, and he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise, and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas took, look for a man of Taurus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come to him and lay his hands on him so that he might be, regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, have you heard from how many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem? And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is chosen, he's my chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. And he rose, from, rose and was baptized. Taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon his name? And has he not come here for the purpose to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scrolls and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on or earth or under heaven was able to open the scrolls or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scrolls or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, and so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw the lamb standing, as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out to all the earth. And he went and took the scrolls from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scrolls, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they began to sing, sing a new song. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom of priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels numbering myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living, living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God the glory. Thank you, Kyle. I don't know why Jesus loved me, but he did. And here we see Jesus loving his disciples after the resurrection. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. <coughs> so they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, 
and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. <coughs> Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you've just caught. <coughs> so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord Jesus. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Together now we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come again to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We join in singing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Dear gracious God and Father, we thank you again for this day. When we celebrate you, Jesus, but we also celebrate, celebrate what you have been teaching us from our baptism on. And we also thank you for what you have been teaching these young children and young adults kindergartners and eighth graders who are getting ready to graduate, but still keep learning. Learning not only what you have taught, but also how you enter into every part of our lives. Lord, I thank you for the parents, the grandparents, the older brothers and sisters who have come alongside these children, but also thank you for their teachers who have been taught by you and also 
have heard your call to teach your lambs and your sheep. Lord, as we all sit at your feet today, as we recognize the life of St. Paul and also our lives as your chosen instruments, I pray that we would not only fall in deeper love with you, Lord Jesus, but also see even better how you call us to bring your good news, the resurrection and the life, to those around us. So let us learn from St. Paul. Let us continue to learn as you have been teaching us. And always grow a deeper hunger and thirst for your word and your righteousness within us. Especially for those that we run into in this life that don't know you. So that we can be better equipped to share you, Lord Jesus, with them. That their lives may also be changed eternally. And so I pray, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that go on inside all of our hearts and minds, may they truly be pleasing, perfect, and holy in your sight. For you and you alone are our foundational rock upon whom we are built and upon whom we stand. And we stand because you stand as our Redeemer who is risen. Amen. Fellow chosen instruments of God. And you may be looking at those musical instruments and saying, well... I may not be as gifted musically as some others. Maybe you are. But all in all, the Lord says, even if that's not your gift, make a joyful noise to the Lord. But if it is your gift, let your praises ring out with whatever that musical gift may be, the voice, an instrument. But whatever your gift or talent is, let it sing out. Let it make a beautiful melody to the Lord. It goes beyond just those instruments, though, as we are going to continue to be reminded. But as we follow along in the life of St. Paul, and as you look at the stained glass windows alongside the sanctuary, especially for those of you on the radio that are listening in and you're picturing in your mind's eye, I would encourage you all, whenever you enter this house or you drive past this house, look at these windows and see the story of Jesus in the life of Paul and in our lives. So we're going to be using these pictures this morning in the life of St. Paul as we heard earlier how God got a hold of him and stopped him in his tracks from persecuting the church to being one of the greatest missionaries ever. And thank God for St. Paul because as we read his word and as this congregation is named after him to give glory to the Lord, it's a reminder we are all chosen instruments of God. God takes us right as we are. And he loves us too much to let us stay that way. And as he took St. Paul, called Saul at that time, who was persecuting the church, putting Christ followers to death because he thought he was doing God a favor. But Jesus stopped him in his tracks and said, It's me that you're persecuting. Stop it, Saul. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Just who are you? I can't see you, but I hear this voice. My eyes are blinded. And Jesus responds, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But from there on, he gives Paul grace. He says, stop it. Stop the bad behavior, but now start a new life, a new behavior. Rise, enter the city, and you will be told what to do. So let me ask you, how many times have you been in here and you've just looked at these stained glass windows of Paul's life during the service, during the sermon? And just thought about, what if that had happened to me? <clears throat> what if I had been a persecutor of Jesus? And who knows, I don't know all of you yet. Maybe some of you in your life's journey weren't that fond of Jesus to begin with. Maybe some of you were diaper Lutherans, diaper Christians. 
Your parents brought you to Jesus right away after being born. But wherever you are in that life story, whether you love Jesus from about the very beginning or came to love him later in life, or maybe you're still wondering about this Jesus. As you look and see the story of Paul and you heard it earlier, we see him helping Stephen be stoned to death. And then later, as he's still persecuting the followers of Christ, Jesus stops him, blinds him, but then sends him. And then Ananias, who was already a follower of Jesus in Damascus, who would have been one of the ones Paul was after, is told by the Lord, now you go see this feller Saul. He's waiting for someone to come. And Ananias, I want you to tell him that he will be my chosen instrument to bring this good news to the Gentiles, the kings, and to the people, the children of Israel. So, go Ananias, for he is a chosen instrument of mine. He's my pick. I'm sending him. And what a statement that would be that God would say, I'm going to take someone who hates me, I'm going to turn them around, and put love in their heart. Not just for me as their Savior, but for everyone else so that they too will know that Jesus is the only way, the only life, the only truth. And Ananias balked at first. Now, wait a minute, Lord. Uh, Don't you know he's been the one persecuting us? Yeah, Ananias, I know that. That's why I stopped him. He's waiting for you, Ananias. Don't be afraid. For he's a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles, the nations, and the kings, and the children of Israel to bring them back to the Lord. Go, Ananias, don't be afraid. And now we come to, this is not just about Saul, Paul, and Ananias. It's also about us. Hear these words that God said through St. Peter. For you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for his own possession. For what purpose? That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, you've seen the light also. Perhaps not as blinding as it was for Saul, but you've seen the light of Christ the love of Christ, and heard his word. And you also are a chosen people, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, belonging to God. He purchased you with Christ's own blood. And you're God's. And each one of you is his chosen instrument to bring the gospel to at least one other person, at least, but really more. And it's not for us to know how that person may come exactly to Christ, but just to know that he's going to plant the seeds through you and through me. We let him water them, but he also calls us to nurture them. But yes, you are his chosen instrument. And that's why on this other side of the sanctuary, we see this is our life in this world. And as we go forward, for you are, yes, you, a chosen instrument of God's to carry his name. In all the turbulence and turmoil of the word, and as we see in in this picture here of the time, the panel right over there towards the center. You, in the midst of time, 
are God's chosen instrument for such a time as this. You and I weren't born in a different century. Well, some of us were. <laughs> but you weren't born for a time other than this. You arrived when you did according to God's time and purpose. And then he places us in the place. To use your time, for you are a chosen instrument of God's to carry his name throughout your life. And then, such as we hear the examples of St. Paul, as our story gets told to glorify Jesus to others after we're gone. But you were born in the time and place you were for God's purpose as his chosen instrument. It's nice to be picked, isn't it? Kids on the playground, you ever pick teams? No one wants to be the last one picked, right? No, not at all. And Jesus says to each and every one of you, you're my first pick. It's not a draft. But you are his chosen instrument. There is no one else like you. Even those who are identical twins are still unique. And each one of you is a unique person chosen by God as his instrument to bring Jesus to the rest of the world. Using your time. And also using your talents. The next one there, right under that Cairo, in the midst of that Christ in the center of our life. In the talents. See someone working in the mines, people in the chemistry labs, people working in industry with those gears. God connected to it all. Using whatever gift as his <laughs> chosen instrument with the gifts and talents and abilities that he has given to you to let Jesus shine from the center of your life to the rest of this world. Yes, you are a chosen, gifted, talented instrument of God's to carry his name. And as you're learning about different ways of life, what areas of work, you eighth graders are a little closer to that. It's okay if you don't know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. Ask the rest of these big kids out here if they knew exactly what it was. Or if they thought they did, but God changed the agenda in the midst of it. And he's still doing that. But recognize how God has gifted and talented each one of you. Not only as you're told by your parents and grandparents and teachers and by me, but also as others respond to seeing you do the things that you do because that's what God put in you. And we keep growing, we keep learning. How do we refine and use these talents to bring the name of Jesus to this world? And yes, you are a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name. And we see that third panel of the treasures. Time, talents, and treasures. God's people walking hand in hand. Some on the farm. Others going throughout life. And if you can look at it real closely in this picture on the slide, and I know you can't see it on the radio, but you see through the window over here the outside world. We're in this world to not be cooped up inside God's house all the time. We are to go out and let our lights shine. And there once was a, a kid who had heard that there were people who were stuck in the glass and they called them saints. And they said, do you know who that person is? Yeah, it's the person that God lets the light shine through. 
That's one definition of a saint, a person that God lets the light shine through. For you are a chosen instrument of mine to shine my light. For the light of Jesus Christ to shine through you for the rest of this world, and so that even as we might be likened to stained glass windows, for God's light to shine through, it goes to the outside world that needs Jesus to use those time, talents, and treasures in this world to carry the name of Christ. While you drive the tractor, drive the combine, drive the truck to bring in the harvest for it to be sent out for food, to raise those calves that are being born, the lambs, ready for the rest of their life, for them also to give glory to the Lord and to meet the needs of this world. So go. You are a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And as we go back to the panel of Paul being sent to the world, the different cities that he went to, the Holy Spirit guiding it all. The Holy Spirit came to you in your baptism and said, you are now God's chosen instrument. I will dwell in you to let my light shine through you for the rest of this world to see. Who knows who you will talk to? God does. It might be before a president. It might be before an emperor or a prime minister. It might be before the person who doesn't think that their life is worth living. And you get to be God's chosen instrument to tell them and the rest of this world. Jesus loves you and you too are a chosen instrument of God's to bring Jesus to the world. If he can turn around a guy breathing out murderous threats against God's people and turn him around to be one of the greatest missionaries ever, he can turn public enemy number one, so to speak, and turn him into a person that wants all people to know Jesus as their loving Lord and Savior. Yes, he can take each and every one of us. And he does. So remember, you are God's chosen instrument to let his light shine through and to carry his name before kings, before world leaders, before the lowest of the low of society. For yes, it's lonely at the top in leadership. It's also lonely when this world just kicks you around. And it's lonely everywhere in the middle, but Jesus says you're not alone. For I am with you, so go. And as you go, remember, you are a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. So as we wrap this up, kids, whenever you see these windows, as you grow up in life, as you come here for chapel throughout the years, kindergartners, eighth graders, as you come back to church, come for the Lord's Supper, come back to celebrate life in Christ, if it's by God's grace that you're married here, have children baptized here, when you're buried, from here if Jesus hasn't returned first. And everyone else, whenever you drive past on the outside, remember, you are God's chosen instrument to bring Jesus to those around you, to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, who is risen and is with you, amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, our living Lord, who is with you. Amen.
We continue now as we return to God our tithes and offerings. If you didn't have a chance to put it on the plate on your way in, you can put it there on the way out, and God still takes it, receives it, and will multiply it for his purposes. One of those parts of your being his chosen instrument to let his light shine. We worship God with our tithes and our offerings, and then graduation time. Heavenly Father, we give you these gifts, not only from what you've already blessed us with, but in faith we give them to you for your work. We give ourselves, our time, our talents, and our treasures, that you may bring your name to the nations around us and to the ends of the earth. To you, O Lord, amen. Kids, you ready? Yes, you are. Teachers, you ready? Yes, you are. We welcome our teachers and school board chairman, Josh Reimers, and now kids, let Jesus' light shine as you graduate. Good morning. I always find this day just a little bit sad, very joyful too, um, as Mrs. Brockman and I have had the joy of really getting to see these kids uh, grow up. Eighth grade, we have watched you pretty much from kindergarten through eighth grade, and we will miss you. We wish you well. We hope you will come back and visit us. But most of all, we hope that you will be carrying Jesus with you and that you are in our thoughts and prayers. Kindergarten, we are very proud of you. I have so enjoyed getting to watch them from the first day of school and watch how they've grown and changed and come out of their little shells. And I just think they are the most hilarious group of kids I've ever seen. They make me laugh every single day. Ms. Minch says you have completed what you need to do. So will the kindergarten class please stand up? When I call your name, will you come up and get your diploma? Lakin Holika. Caroline Hunky. Paisley Jacobson. Morgan Meyergard. Kendall Penrose. Maddox Weaver. Congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> On behalf of the school board and all the teachers at St. Paul 8th grade, would you please stand up? Willa Hughes. Zach Johnson.
and Katrina Moyer. She's not here with us today because she's being confirmed today. Uh, so we just wanted to remember her today also as a special day. Peyton Penrose. Haley Recker. Melissa Recker. Diane Reyes. Jacob Schantz. Hunter Swanson. <coughs> Nate Vandergren. We are so very proud of you. Congratulations. Let's give it a round. Every year we present a plaque that hangs in our school for each class of the eighth graders. And this year, this just seemed appropriate for our class. And it says, on the journey, God will save and protect you. Lead and direct your steps. Fight for you, make a way for you. Answer your prayers, give wisdom and understanding. Fill you with hope, strengthen with power, bless you with good things, and be faithful to the end. That is our prayer for you, eighth grade, and we pray that your journey into high school will bring you many blessings and that you will grow in your faith walk. Thank you, and congratulations students, and thank you parents, thank you teachers. What began many years ago for you eighth graders is a little bit closer now. Yeah, you gotta go back to school but keep learning. Never lose that thirst for learning God's word and then sharing Jesus as you've been learning about him through all of these years at St. Paul Lutheran School. As you go out into this world, go to high school and let them know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Let them know you've been hanging around with Jesus always. We continue now as we go as the family of God to our Lord in prayer. Let us stand. Let us pray for ourselves, for all members of the body of Christ as we proclaim his resurrection, and for all people in their various needs. Gracious God, hear us for the sake of your own Lamb, for worthy is the Lamb. Guide your church, Lord Jesus, as she witnesses to your victory over sin and death. Direct all who announce the gospel promise of eternity in your presence, and protect all the newly baptized as they grow in understanding your love. Use all agencies of health and welfare, as well as the governments of the nation, so that peace and prosperity may be realized for all people. Grant insight into the world around us through ongoing scientific research, so that we may more fully enjoy your good creation. All of these using the time, talents, and treasures that you have given to us as your chosen instruments. In particular, for all police, fire, EMTs, and first responders and healthcare workers, military personnel and their families as they serve, and for those who serve in the foreign fields of mission, Jana Engelhart and Josh Langen family, Ruth, 
Jacob and Lauren Freyer and family, all bring you, Lord Jesus, as your chosen instruments to the nations. Gracious God, hear us for the sake of your own Lamb, for worthy is the Lamb. Grant favorable weather, Lord our God, that crops produce bounty and famine be lessened. We thank you for the rains that you have sent recently. And even where some have provided some devastation and storms and hail and flooding, we ask that you would still bring restoration. But thank you for watering the earth and continuing to do so. Remove the shackles of people suffering from injustice and oppression. Surround them with caring instruments of your love. Accompany first responders at home and armed forces deployed, that peace and harmony may break out in all levels of human society. Gracious God, hear us for the sake of your own Lamb, for worthy is the Lamb. O Holy Spirit, Spirit, be among us here in this place, for our graduates, kindergarten and eighth graders, and for those who are not all able to gather with us, for Kristen, Courtney, Reagan, Elaine, Bill, Heather, Anselm, Sue, Penny, Tammy, Doreen, Morgan, Faith, Marge, and Eva. Lord, some who are with us and others who are not able to be with us in person, but are with us in spirit and listening along and viewing along through your technology. Lord, we ask that you bring the healing according to your hand and your will to give glory to your name for these your chosen instruments. And as you are here among us and with us all together, by your grace, in your mercy, give us strength and opportunity to grow in love toward one another and in service to our communities. We pray for those near and dear to us whom we have mentioned. Grant them health, healing, and comfort. Gracious God, hear us for the sake of your own Lamb, for worthy is the Lamb. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup at supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace the Lord be with you always.
true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you firm in faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and joy for his service as his chosen instruments. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks that you have strengthened us with the body and blood of your Son, who alone is worthy of worship and praise. Use our hearts and minds, our bodies and abilities, to demonstrate his love each day until we see him in glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. be seated. Once again, graduates, congratulations, and look at those fancy kindergarten graduation hats. Wow. Again, we have a reception in honor of our graduates uh, in the fellowship hall downstairs. We'd like to take this opportunity to greet you uh, rather than at the door uh, for myself um, to just say God's blessings to you for as we take group pictures and then we'll meet you downstairs for the reception, but enjoy the cake, the coffee, and then the voters meeting follows. Please do stay for that. And uh, let's go with God's grace downstairs and have a blessed week in Christ. If you do have something that you'd like to share with me, you can see me downstairs. Congratulations, graduates.